Hi, my name is Coda. I'm a student pilot at Microsoft, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Azure Web App for Containers. So, a few learning outcomes. So, in this video, you'll learn about the Azure Container Registry, which I'll be referring to as ACR. We'll be creating our own ACR. We'll push our Docker image to this newly created Azure Container Registry. We'll create a web app, and then using our um, the image we pushed to our Container Registry. Um, we'll deploy it to our web app. Uh, there are also a few configuration settings we'll need to change on our web app, uh, which I'll also be covering. A few prerequisites if you're going to be following along um, with this video. So you'll need an Azure account, you'll need Docker installed on your machine, you'll need a Docker image, and you'll also need Azure CLI also installed on your machine. So let's go ahead and get into it. So a little bit about uh, Docker registries um, and the Azure Container Registry. So Docker registries are services um, that store your Docker images. These registries can either be public, meaning anyone can pull a copy of your image, or private, meaning only those who are authenticated can pull a copy of your Docker image. Uh, Docker itself provides um, container registry service. Uh, they both provide both a, a free public registry um, and also a paid private registry. If you've got an Azure subscription, um, you can use Azure Docker registry. Um, and the benefit of this is that uh, using your subscription, um, this private registry could actually be free. So in order to create um, an Azure uh, Docker registry or Azure container registry, uh, we'll first need to go ahead and create a resource group. And so uh, a resource group um, isn't anything particular to ACR. Um, but basically what it is is an ID that Azure uses to uh, group certain resources. Um, you can then monitor provision and manage billing for the assets uh, within this resource group. But before we can even do that, we first need to log in to Azure. So using command prompt, we'll go ahead and log into Azure using AZ login. This will go ahead and open up a new um, web browser for you to enter your credentials. Once you've successfully logged in, it should return um, all the subscriptions you have with that account. So now let's go ahead and create this new resource group. For that, we use AZ, group, create. Now we need a name for our resource group. Um, if you've been following along with our tutorials, you'll note that we'd be building a dank not dank website. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it dank not dank uh, g resource group and we need to specify a location so for this i'm going to go ahead and specify west us let's go ahead and create that cool and if you've successfully created your resource group uh, you should see the provisioning state has succeeded so now let's go ahead and can uh, create our container registry now, a few things to note, um, Azure Container Registry has a couple of different um, tiers which you can select from. And so there are three main tiers, or um, as they're referred to as SKUs. So you've got Basic, Standard, and Premium. For this tutorial, we'll be using Basic. Um, however, basically the main differences between these SKUs are the size and the usage that you're going to be using it for. Um, yeah, so to go ahead, um, let's go ahead and create it. So AZ. Create, oops, AZ, ACR, so Azure Container Registry, create. Now we need to specify the resource group, which we just created. Resource group is dank, not dank RG. We need to specify um, the name of our Azure Container Registry. Now this does need to be unique, so um, for me, I'm just going to use my initials and dank registry. And we need to specify the SKU. As mentioned, um, BASIC is perfectly fine for this tutorial. Uh, now this does take a few minutes, so please be patient. Um, once it's succeeded, you should get a similar response. Now before we can um, push our Docker images to our container registry, um, we first need to log into it. But even before that, um, we need to ensure that um, 
admin user has been enabled in our um, container registry. As you can note here, um, admin user is currently set to false. So we need to go ahead and set that to true. So in order to do that, we go ahead and type in AZ, ACR, and now we want to update it. So update, we go ahead and specify the name and the key that we want to change. So um, admin enabled, and we want to go ahead and set that to true. And what this does, it allows us to get our credentials so that we can go ahead and log into our uh, container registry. Now once that's complete, you can now note that the admin user enabled key has now been set to true. So now we can go ahead and get our credentials. So in order to do that, we go AZ, ACR, credentials, credential, show, and we just need to go ahead and specify the name of our ACR. Awesome, so it should return uh, two sets of passwords and your username. So in order to um, log into our Azure Container Registry, um, there are a few things we need. So looking back up here, um, we'll need to note our login server, which is this here. Go back down. So let's go ahead and log in. So we use, this time we use the Docker uh, command, so Docker login. We have our server, our login server. And then we need to just go ahead and specify our username which is here. Copy that. We'll then prompt you for a password. So we go ahead and copy this. One thing to note, it doesn't actually display the password once you paste it in there. Um, so once you paste it, it just go ahead and press enter. Awesome, and if it's logged in um, successfully, um, it should return login succeeded. Now, we've successfully logged into our Azure Container Registry. Um, however, before we need to, before we actually go ahead and push our Docker image uh, to our Container Registry, um, we first need to tag it um, specific uh, to ACR. Um, so if we go ahead and type in Docker images, we'll be able to see all the images that are currently on our machine. Uh, here we can note we've got um, my app. And we need to go ahead and tag this with our um, login server name followed by the image name. Um, so in order to do that, we'll go ahead and go docker tag. And we'll, we will need to refer to the image ID. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And now we'll need to refer to our login server and our image name, which in my case is called my app. Um, now for some good housekeeping, we'll go ahead and tag that with um, a version number. And so once we update it, we know which is the latest version. Um, so this is the first version, so version one. And we'll go ahead and create that. So now if I go docker images, we can now note um, another entry uh, with the one we just created here. So let's go ahead and push this to our Azure Container Registry. So we'll go ahead and go docker push, and we'll go ahead and copy this. And we just need to tag it with the version that we want to push through, which is version one. Um, as you'll note, there is a decent um, amount that needs to be pushed through, so this will take some time. Okay, so that looks like it's been done. 
Uh, now we can go ahead and verify whether our image has successfully pushed to our uh, registry. And so in order to do that, we go AZ, show container registry, repository list, and dash N, and we'll go ahead and specify the name of our um, container registry. And once that returns, we'll be able to see that um, my app has been pushed through. There you go, yep, awesome. So now all that's left to do is we need to go ahead and create a web app for container. Um, and then we just need to go ahead and con uh, configure it to use uh, this image. So let's go ahead and do that now. In order to do this, we need to go ahead um, and use the Azure portal. So once we've logged in, we need to go ahead and create a resource select web and web app for containers. Now we need to fill out some details for this new web app. So we need to choose a name. Now this name does need to be unique. Uh, for this, once again, just my initials. And if you've been following along with the tutorials, you'll note that we'll be creating a dank not dank website. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, select your subscription. And if you remember to the start of this uh, video, you know we've created a resource group. So we'll go ahead and use that. App service plan. So you can go ahead and modify this if you like, uh, depending on how much compute power you need um, and what location you want this at. Um, however, the default is perfectly fine for this tutorial. And now we need to go ahead and configure our container. So we'll go ahead and select the Azure container registry. We'll select the registry we've created. We'll go ahead and select the image we've pushed and version one that we've tagged it. We can leave startup file as blank. Awesome, and once this is all filled up, we can go ahead and create um, our web app. Now this does take a little bit of time, um, so please be patient while it deploys. Once successful, we'll go ahead and go to the resource. Um, and this is because we need to configure some settings on it. So what we need to do now is we need to configure our, ex our exposed port. If you recall to an earlier Dockerfile tutorial, uh, you would have noticed a line similar to um, HS-P3000. And so what that did is it uh, set our port um, this did support our image users to 3000. Um, as your web apps currently only expose ports 80 and 443, and therefore we need to tell our web app what port our image or our, sus our subsequent container will use. So on the left uh, menu of our app service, um, you'll note a menu item called application settings over here. So we'll go ahead and select that. And we need to go ahead and add a new setting. Um, in the setting, we'll specify the port. I think it's called websites with an S underscore port. And we'll be going ahead and setting our port to 3000. Once done, we'll go ahead and save this new setting. Uh, now, now, for your own case, it may not always be port 3000. You'll need to go ahead and check your Docker file um, in order to see what port you need to set. Once it's saved, we'll just go ahead and restart our web app just to be sure it pulls the latest settings. Awesome, and then we'll go ahead and browse through it. Now initially, and depending on um, what tier you select uh, your app service for your web app, um, the first time this can take some time. And here we see that our um, web app has successfully loaded. So congratulations, you've successfully created a web app using a container. Um, and this concludes this video tutorial.